Imagine a bright sunny day, clear skies, music in the air, young people are dancing, a rave, a concert for peace. Yes, for peace. It is really, it is early morning on the Holy Sabbath. The sun is just risen to mark a new day. It is also a festive Jewish high holiday, Simchat Torah. Simchat Torah means the joy of the Torah, where we celebrate the book of books, our holy Bible. And then, in one split second, this idyllic Eden became hell on earth. The peaceful morning air was pierced with the wail of rocket sirens. Thousands, I'm telling you, thousands of Hamas mortars and rockets rained down indiscriminately on many Israeli cities and villages. But the rockets were only cover for the pogrom, the pogrom that followed. Barbaric Hamas terrorists invaded Israel from the sea, the land, and the air. They came with one purpose, one purpose only, to savagely murder every living thing they encountered. Hamas Nazi murders went from house to house with hit lists, a thoroughly planned, willful, premeditated attack. They brutally murdered civilians in their beds. They drove pickup trucks with machine guns. Yes, we all remember, just like ISIS, and fired blindly at hundreds of young people at a concert. 300, 300 were burned alive or butchered in that concert. Much of what remained were clumps of flesh and, and bloody limbs. Parents had to bring their children's toothbrushes for DNA so they could figure out whose limb belonged to who. These Hamas monsters raped women and children, parading naked girls that they raped and bodied that they defiled through the streets of Gaza why thousands, and I'm telling you, thousands, you can see the footage, jeered and cheered. The savages tortured small babies. Just like the Nazis, Hamas terrorists removed infants from their cribs. Yes, we have it on video. Swung them repeatedly against the ground until their skulls became a pulp. Children were murdered in front of their parents, and parents in front of their children. I've seen a video of a terrorist filmed by him, by himself, who tossed a grenade into a bomb shelter with a father and his two young boys inside. The father was killed instantly, and the two boys ran out of the shelter screaming that their father is dead and that they want to be dead too. All this is occurring, believe it or not, as the monster who murdered their father calmly helps himself to the contents of the family's fridge. Yes, no horror movie compares to the pure brutality that Hamas carried out. No, none. Amit Man, a 22-year-old from Kibbutz Be'eri and a paramedic for Magen David Adom, Israel's Red Cross. She dedicated her life, literally, and you will understand why, to saving others. When the Hamas monsters invaded the kibbutz, Amit ran to the clinic to treat as many wounded as she could. For hours, hours, Amit worked non-stop trying to save lives. She knew the sadistic terrorists were outside her clinic because she heard the gunfire, but she stayed there. She was committed to saving lives, not running away. Finally, the terrorist burst into her clinic and put a bullet, a bullet through her brain. She was a Magen David Adom paramedic, the Israeli Red Cross, in uniform. But that didn't stop these savages. Ambulances were set on fire. Not one, many. Dozens of Magen David Adom medical teams were in, intentionally targeted on their way to tend 
to the wounded, and many other par paramedics were murdered. Barzilai Hospital in my hometown city, Ashkelon, in Israel, suffered direct hits from Hamas rockets. Not for the first time. Hamas has been deliberately firing rockets at it for years, for years, intentionally. Yet, not a single condemnation of this barbarity has been mentioned here. Not here, not by the Security Council, not by the Secretary General, and not by this absurd resolution. It seems that hospitals and medical teams only need to be protected as long as they are not Israeli. The hypocrisy is beyond belief, beyond belief. The brutal ISIS-like monsters abducted over 220 hostages from Israel and dozens of other countries, including babies, babies, children, persons with disabilities, the elderly and Holocaust survivors. Kfir Bibas, Kfir Bibas is nine months old. Nine months old and he's being held right now in Gaza as a hostage. Nine months old. What, what barbaric terrorists can do such a thing? And together with him, 30 other children. 30 other children. We saw Hamas's brutality in Israel. I cannot begin to fathom what horrors the hostages are enduring right now as we speak here. 20 days have gone by and Israel is still counting her dead. It took weeks to collect all of the bodies. Some bodies are burnt like pieces of coal. It is almost impossible to identify them. Countless burned bodies have been found with ash in their throats, meaning they were still alive, still alive when lit on fire, intentionally, by the Hamas terrorists. A clump of charred human remains that was burned beyond recognition was found. At first, the medical pers personnel couldn't figure out what they were looking at. Yet, after a CT scan, it became clear that they were two spines, not one, two spines bound together with wire. One belonging to an adult and the other, the small spine of a child. So just try to imagine that parents, that parents feeling as they and their child were burning alive, burning alive. The painful screaming of the love of their life was the last thing they heard, the last thing. Do you not think it's unbelievable that this resolution here today and this session are not solely focused on Hamas's atrocities? When reading this resolution, Hamas seems to be missing in action. The drafters of the resolution claim to be concerned about peace, yet the depraved murders who initiated this war are not even mentioned in the resolution, not even mentioned. They see each one of you as puppet. They write a resolution completely devoid of any content related to the situation. They assume that you have already forgotten who it is that is responsible for the inhumane violence, and they just expect you to support it automatically. This resolution is a disgrace to your intelligence, a disgrace. It is unfathomable that such a resolution, one that doesn't even mention Hamas, could possibly be voted upon here. Let that sink in, please. Distinguished representatives, representatives, Hamas carried out atrocities, the likes of which we have not seen since the Holocaust. Yet, unlike the Holocaust, where the evidence we have is mostly black and white photographs and soundless footage, here, the proof is in high definition because some of it is from, yes, security footage, but much of it is from the cell phones and GoPro cameras belonging to the Hamas Nazis themselves. Many may be asking, why did they film their sadistic violence? 
Well, I'll tell you why. Very simple. They filmed it in order to terrorize the Israeli public, to release these videos and put fear in the hearts of the citizens of Israel. By the way, this is what terrorists do. They terrorize. I have seen much footage over the past weeks that will be seared into my mind forever. But there is one sight that I keep on seeing when I try to sleep. In the video, one can see a terrible injured civilian, bloodied yet alive, laying on the ground as a Hamas savage screaming, Allahu Akbar, repeatedly pummels the man's neck with a garden hoe in order to decapitate him. The man on the ground is an agricultural worker from Thailand. He's not Israeli, he's not Jewish. He was merely alive trying to make a living for his family. But he was decapitated with a blunt gardening tool. Horrifying. Israel is not at war with human beings. We are at war with monsters. Over 1,400 have been slaughtered, 1,000 injured, and over 220 hostages are being held right now by Hamas ISIS terrorists. To say that this is Israel's 9-11 would be an understatement. Proportionally, the death toll of this atrocity is 15 times bigger than 9-11. By the way, our enemies are not 7,000 miles away, they are 7,000 feet away in our own backyard. So for this reason, Israel's mission is to eradicate this evil from the earth. Eradicate. ISIS was the Islamic State of Iraq and Syria, and Hamas is the Islamic State of Gaza. So just as was done with ISIS, Hamas must be no more. Our goal is to completely eradicate Hamas's capabilities, and we will use every mean at our disposal to accomplish this. Not for revenge, no. Not for retaliation, no but to ensure that such depravity, such atrocities, never occurs again. Israel is at the forefront of the war on radical jihadist terror. And if Israel doesn't succeed in obliterating, obliterating Hamas's terror capabilities, the whole world will pay the price. Thanks for watching. Drop a comment below. Don't forget to like, share, and hit subscribe to stay updated with our latest content. Until next time, stay informed and inspired. This is Dajabnik signing off.